Whether you are creating 3D animations, VFX shots, or even playing video games, nothing can operate without rendering and render engines. Deep within the digital graveyard of software, we can discover numerous render engines that were once industry leaders, but today they are nothing but a memory, and only their old user base are left to tell the tale. So what were these render engines, and how did they meet their demise? And what are the signs that show that your render engine might be next, so you can jump ship before it is too late? Let's start with the legendary render engine known as Mentoray, a name that may or may not immediately ring a bell, but for many, it does. It was for me personally the first ever render engine I used back in the day, and there was a time when it was nothing short of a miracle, and it was very iconic, and it was one of the best render engines in the field. Mentoray was created in 1989 by the creative minds of a company known as Mental Images, which began its journey as a powerful CPU-based render engine that excelled in producing high-quality photorealistic images and animations, and it did this for various 3D software and productions, including iconic feature films such as The Matrix Reloaded and the Star Wars franchise. It quickly rose to popularity in the 90s upon its debut, thanks to its impressive features and the fact that it was one of the first publicly available render engines. Naturally, it was only a question of time before it became an industry standard software and a key asset for major studios and companies such as Autodesk, Alias, and Wavefront, along with VFX giants such as ILM and ESC Entertainment. So how can a software go from hero to zero like this? Funny enough, it was this very same popularity that led to its eventual discontinuation. So let me explain. It didn't happen overnight for Mentoray. You see, it all started at the turn of the millennium. During this period, a new generation of GPU-based render engines started to emerge, including the likes of Arnold, V-Ray, and so on, which made Mentoray to a certain extent start to lose value in the eyes of the industry, because why would they use it if they could use a far more powerful render engine, especially that can use a GPU, which is such a great source of power? So, at an attempt to revive it, NVIDIA purchased it in 2007, with the goal of transitioning it into a GPU-based render engine. Following that, it continued to be a popular render engine in the industry, despite the technical issues. But the main reason for the discontinuation was NVIDIA's reliance on Autodesk to ship it with their software, such as Max, Maya, Softimage, and so on. And as we covered in previous videos, they are the last people to rely on if you want to keep something up to date and operating on a good level. First, in 2015, they announced that the engine would no longer come pre-installed with Maya. Then the following year, this partnership started to end after Autodesk acquired Arnold, until Monterey was eventually dropped. So, in an effort to maintain its user base, Nvidia released their own plugin versions of the software, but the sales were disappointingly low because the industry had already moved on, which is unfortunate, to software with superior architecture such as Arnold, which led Nvidia making a difficult decision to discontinue Mentoray in 2017, which was expected but sad for many. Before we continue, in my opinion, one of the best investments as an artist you could make is a drawing tablet. If you want to get serious about your craft, a mouse won't cut it, because drawing tablets can elevate your art and push your work to the next level. One of the best companies out there, which we already reviewed some of their products on our channel, is XP Pen. Just recently, we reviewed the Artist Pro 14 Generation 2, which is an amazing value for the money. So if you have been eyeballing a drawing or display tablet for a while, the XP Pen Black Friday sale is right around the corner and it is offering huge discounts, up to 40% off on all of their lineups. So if you want to snag one for yourself, you can click the link down in the description and visit the XP Pen online store, where you will find a list of all the available deals. Again, XP Pen offers premium products for a very competitive price. Their displays and tablets are of extremely high quality, 
and their cutting edge X3 pen stylus is one of the best in the market, able to deliver 16K pressure levels. If you are lost to what to choose, you can check out the Artist 24 Pro and 22 Pro. However, if you are looking for something a little bit more portable, you can check out the 13 and 15 Pro. Or if you are all about the drawing tablet lifestyle, you can't go wrong with the Deco Pro Generation 2, just to name a few. So go ahead and click the first link in the description to check out XP Pen. Now back to the video. But the next one wasn't expected at all and caught everyone by surprise. So a render engine that faced the same unfortunate fate was Brazil. And it was as unique as its name was because it had the ability to handle different types of projects. From simple architectural visualization all the way to complex VFX simulations. Thanks to its ray tracing and global illumination capabilities. I know it doesn't look that impressive right now, but this was 15 years ago. It was the real deal back then. I remember it was popular among 3D artists and you can see a lot of projects using it back in the day in forums. Brazil, as it was often referred to, was a proprietary commercial plugin for many popular software such as Max, Rhino 3D, Autodesk Viz, and so on. And its origin can be traced back to two guys, Steve Blackman and Scott Corvin. But they weren't just anybody, they were two R&D team members from Blur Studio. And together, they formed a duo to create a company that they called Splatterfish to market and sell their software, which was later acquired by Caustic Graphics before the latter itself was acquired by Imagination Technologies in 2010. Brazil Render Engine has achieved a lot of success in its lifetime, with many blockbusters under its name, such as Star Wars Episode 3, Superman Returns, and The Incredibles. So how come no one is talking about it now? Well, to be honest, this one was a bit odd. The story took unexpected turns in 2012, just one month after the release of Brazil SDK, a toolkit based on the engine, and the Imagination Technologies company dropped a bombshell after that by announcing that they will no longer accept new purchases of the software. Alongside the retirement of the Splatter website, there was no explanation behind this decision, at least not any that I could find, and just like that, the engine was abandoned. The end of the next render engine wasn't tragic, but it took a different turn. If you remember at the start of the video, we discussed that there was an explosion of GPU-based render engine at the start of this millennium. Among these, there was an engine known as Fright Render, a physical-based and a pioneering and biased render engine, developed by Random Control. This means that it was designed to simulate the behavior of light accurately using advanced algorithm calculations and to produce realistic light and materials with ease. Once again, it doesn't look impressive today, but at the time, it was really great. As for the discontinuation of the render engine itself, I've got some good news this time, because instead of being a sad ending, it was simply a question of a natural evolution of things. Following the success of Fry Render, Random Control introduced a new render engine known as Arion, and originally it was Fry Render in disguise, because the goal behind it was the rewriting of Fry Render Core, and it was one of the first GPU accelerated render engines in the industry. This progress, however, made Fry Render obsolete, and they had to discontinue it because it no longer made sense to maintain the software. And to be fair, if we look back at the story of Mentoray, I think rewriting software with a new and fresh architecture was a safer choice to survive in what's already a very competitive market. But the surprising thing, or not so surprising, is that the Arion Render Engine is no longer popular, because the company I think isn't developing it anymore, instead they are focusing on a render engine called Maverick Render. In a similar vein, Disney's Hyperion Render Engine was an in-house tool that was never released to the public, and one they introduced as a way for them to transition to path tracing global illumination, which was becoming the norm at the time, and as a way to keep being relevant in the animation industry. Path tracing is of course a way to simulate how light interacts with objects, in a way similar to how the real world works, thanks to advanced computer algorithms. The original architecture of Hyperion was proposed by Brent Burley, 
which was further developed by a team at Disney. And it was known for being an engine capable of rendering complex scenes with a lot of geometry. And it did this in high quality back in the time. The software saw a lot of success, and it was used in a lot of Disney productions such as Zootopia, Moana, and Big Hero 6. Realistically speaking, I can see the render engine still being used today, because it has all the required features in modern render engines, and the discontinuation reasons for these in-house tools are always unknown and stay a mystery, at least not something that I could find. But my bet is it was job because they also had access to RenderMan, the render engine that was developed by Pixar, a company that they own. And this is only logical, because why would they use a render engine that is less powerful than something that they have access to, which is RenderMan. So guys, I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.